alongside is Steve Mariucci and uh, Coach. I was excited uh, to interview you today. You because, were, yeah, actually, it's been a long time, by the way. I know. Where you been? Yeah. <laughs> uh, nobody has more history between the 49ers and Packers than you do. In fact, it was 22 years ago this week in your rookie season as the head coach of the 49ers. You play in the NFC Championship game against the Packers, and the Packers had eliminated the 49ers from the playoffs in two two previous years. Mm. How much pressure was on you to win that NFC Championship? I was coaching for the Packers one of those years when we eliminated the 49ers (laughs) while I was coaching Brett Favre. Right. And we came and played in candlestick. And uh, that's the year that I took the Cal job. So I was kind of doing double duty, trying to hire a staff at Cal and then coach the, the Packers, Brett Favre, through the playoffs, and then we beat the 49ers, and then we ended up getting beat in the championship game by Michael Irvin and Deion Sanders over there in Dallas. But it was, uh, yeah, to, to, to play the Packers again in my rookie season, and, of course, I knew every darn guy on that team and coach, and, and, uh, and they, were really good. they were really good at the time, Dennis. Uh, we were the number one seed. They were the number two seed, but we, we were both 14-3 and three going into that game. And, of course, they had the defending Super Bowl team. Mm-hmm. They, they were the champs. Um, they had the three-time MVP in, in a row, Brett Favre. Three, that's never happened in 100 years of NFL football where one, pl- one player is three times in a row MVP. So here's coming to town. It was a big game. And then it was El Nino. It was raining the whole darn week. Remember <laughs> yeah, El Nino? Yeah, it was bad weather. <laughs> yeah. It got us. Uh, um, you don't have many opportunities to get to that pinnacle, the NFC Championship. Mm. Being in your rookie season, did you understand how, how hard it was to get to that point and how devastating was that loss that particular year? Yeah, you don't, you know, we didn't have Jerry Rice that year. If you recall, Jerry got hurt in the first game against Tampa, and then he came back against Denver, scored a touchdown, and Steve Atwater hurt his knee again, and, and then, of course, Denver won the Super Bowl. They beat the Packers after. Right. Um, so, you know, we thought we had a good team. We thought we would, you know, uh, after, after the loss, you know, you say, well, you know, we, we, let's go back next year. Let's do it again. Let's be better next year with Jerry. And it didn't happen. Um, I had coached in the NFC Championship game two other times before that, once with the Packers, once with the Rams when we played the 85 Bears. So I've been, I've been to that game three times and haven't been able to mm-hmm. take the next step to the Super Bowl. And you were in the number one seat as the 49ers yeah, we were. are this season. Yes. So uh, you get sweet revenge, <laughs> January 3rd, 1999, 49ers and Packers, <laughs> not the NFC title game. Sweet revenge. It's the wild card game. <laughs> yeah. And it's became, it becomes famous for the catch two. Yeah. Take us through that moment. <sighs> well, the moment was, you know, you know, we're playing against the Packers and Mike Holmgren. And, you know, there was talk about Mike leaving the, the, the Packers and going somewhere. And there was also talk about, hey, if he comes in and beats the, the, the Niners again, maybe he becomes the next head coach. So, and I, you know, you're so focused as a coach, you don't worry about that stuff, but your family does and your friends do and your coaching staff may. Um, so that, there was a little added pressure right there. We better win this game or we might be, <laughs> might be looks selling tie-dye shirts on Telegraph Avenue or something. I don't know. I did not know that was an issue for oh, it's you. an issue. Um, no. <laughs> but I'm just taking you through the moment, okay? okay. And so it. It, it was a heck of a game. It was a heck of a game. You're talking Steve Young against Brett Favre and Reggie White. I mean, and, and Jerry and, oh, my God. And then it came down to the, you know, we got to score a touchdown. And we called four verticals. And Steve Young goes back. Steve Young was under center. Steve Young never went in shotgun in his whole life, okay? That's what's mm-hmm. so different than it is now, right? 65% of the game is in shotgun mm-hmm. right now. He goes back and he, hit, and he throws that up and down throw to Terrell Owens and, and he got inside the safety and he caught it. And it wasn't a big deal that he caught it. It was a big deal that he kept it because he got ba-boom, ba-boom. Uh, and, and so there was a, that was a great catch and concentration. And T.O. hadn't had that good of a game. He had some drops and a fumble and all yeah, of that. Right. But he really uh, redeemed himself at the end. I think everybody in the world thought maybe we're going to Jerry Rice, you know, to try to win that game. But Steve made a good decision, a good throw. 
we win the darn thing, and uh, it was it was one of my very fond memories <laughs> in Candlestick. Yeah, but yeah. given the history and the Packers eliminating the 49ers yeah. constantly three straight years in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, we needed to win that game. Yeah, monkey off your on back. A, on a lot of levels. Job saver. <laughs> For a little while. <laughs> <laughs> right. <clears throat> so now, now fast forward to this Sunday. Uh, given the history, uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers, uh, you know, drafted and passed by the 49ers in 2005. That's a subplot to this game. Uh, how do you size up this matchup? especially given that the 49ers beat the Packers soundly in November. Yeah, I mean, and when you go back and watch that game, which I just did yesterday, and it was really a, it was really a one-sided game. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Niners dominated that game from start to finish. And, and I'll be quite honest with you, I'm a little surprised that the Packers are here. Matt LaFleur is a friend of mine. He coached at Northern Michigan where I coached, okay? That's where Robert wow. Sala went to school, the defensive coordinator. Really? Yeah, the Northern Michigan University. Anyway, um, so, so I didn't think they would win this many games, 13-3 and three in his first year, and, uh, and, and uh, with a new scheme and all of that, and Aaron Rodgers had to learn a new language, this, you know, teach an old dog new tricks. Well, boy, they, they did a heck of a job. Um, but that last game now, you know, Aaron Rodgers was under duress the whole time, the whole time. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, they made it rough on him, didn't convert a third down. Uh, and so it was 23 to nothing at halftime. Um, and so now how is it gonna be different than that? Well, you're talking about getting D Ford back and Quan Alexander back, they didn't play in that game. And so, uh, whew, it's gonna be tough for the yeah, Packers. Yeah, I, I, think, I think the Niners are, are gonna win this game. They're the better roster. Um, but you never know because when you have Aaron Rodgers, man, that guy's spectacular. How are the Packers different? now yeah, than they were a month. They haven't ago. lost a game since there. It was kind of a wake-up call, wasn't it? And, uh, you, you know, they've won, what, seven in a row since mm -hmm. then or whatever it is. And, and you know, they're more confident. They added to their defense in a, in a real good way. They got the Smith brothers, we like to call mm -hmm. them, right? Zedarius mm -hmm. and Preston, mm -hmm. really good duo. Um, and, then, and then you're talking about, um, you know, drafted, drafted a defensive lineman, Rashad Gary, who's doing okay. Uh, but they really said, we need to get better on defense to help Aaron Rodgers out. His young receivers are growing up. Uh, I think they're going to be a, a better team. They're a more confident team. They've tightened up some loose ends. But, but it's still, I, man, I can't see them beating the Niners on any given Sunday, I suppose. But the Niners are a very dominating team right now. The 49ers have struggled against mobile quarterbacks. Kyler Murray in Arizona, <clears throat> although they didn't beat them, they struggled against him. Be Lamar. Russell Wilson. They lost to Lamar. Lamar. They held him down yeah, to 26 points. Exactly. Um, but Rand Rodgers is not a mobile quarterback. If you're Matt LaFleur and you know that pass rush is coming, with the addition of D4, do you change Rodgers at all? Do you you, you you get the ball out of his hands? That's what you do. You do, kind of I mean, to protect a quarterback, if there's protection issues, which there's going to be, because he was under duress the whole, he had fumbled the first, first series, boom, on the two yard line, seven nothing, it's like, whoa. It's on a blitz right Fred Warner. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, and so, you know, in general, what a coach would do if there's gonna be pressure, because you, you, you don't, hold up as, as well as you'd like to. You run the ball more often with, with Aaron Jones. Um, you throw the ball quicker, you get him in shotgun and get the ball out inside of two, two and a half seconds and, and let your quick game go to work. You screen, you trap, you do those kinds of things. Now, that's pretty much what they've been doing all year. Um, they just, they just didn't, they had a bad day at the office last time here in yeah. Levi. Yeah. And you talked about Aaron Jones, but the 49ers shut down Dalvin Cook last week. I know. They, it. They, the 49ers defense is playing their best football of the season. They should, man, with yeah. five first yeah. rounders on that defensive yeah. line. Those guys are animals. Yeah. But they capitalized yeah. on those draft picks and made, made a good pick. Yeah. And, and John Lynch, executive of the year. Yeah. Congratulations, yeah. John, man. He's doing a great job. What's amazing that uh, one year ago, people were talking about Lynch and Shanahan being on the hot seat. Yeah, of that course. This year, it's all year. about the record, yeah. right? Yeah. And and so, you know, you go four and 12 and that's what people talk about. Um, but, you know, they had some injuries and then they added some more pieces and they hit on their, their draft choices, you know, Bosa in their first round, yeah. Fred Warner in, in 
uh, Debo Samuel. I mean, some of these kids are just really going to be good and players. Kittle was uh, Kittle, 15th that guy, round. <laughs> I, he was a fifth rounder out of Iowa. Right. Iowa is like, you know how like Penn State is linebacker U or whatever they call it? it Iowa is like tight end U, right? Yeah. But, he, but got him in the fifth round, got a steal. They never threw yeah. him the ball in Iowa. They like right. to run, you know. Best receiving tight end in the NFL right now, right? <laughs> yeah, I love you the guy. Know. I love him. Yeah. Um, and looking ahead to the 49er offense on Sunday, now Jimmy Garoppolo will have a tendency to miss the underneath defenders uh, through an uh, interception to a linebacker last week. What do you see offensively? Uh, you're laughing. I'm laughing at you because you sound like the media to me. <laughs> you, you can't. And don't tell me I'm in the media. I know this is going to be my 15th Super Bowl, but I'm not a media guy. Okay, speak, uh, <laughs> speak glowingly but of. Uh, I like Jimmy G and, and, and Jimmy GQ. Did you watch our show last? That's I, his I new did. nickname. I, and 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 you know what? They're so dominating in some areas. Okay, like defense. All right, they're great. Like play calling, Kyle's great. Like the run game, that's great, you know, and they got backs, running backs by committee, all right? Committee, they got all kinds of guys. And, and so everybody gets credit that way. And then if Jimmy G throws a pick or two, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, oh, is he the weak link around here? Mm-hmm. They're lucky to have that guy. I know they paid him a lot of money, but you got to have that guy pulling the trigger. He is so good with this offense because by running the, and they're not like ten, Tennessee, you know, who's playing in the other championship, right. where they was boom, downhill yeah. with Derrick Henry, mm-hmm. big, strong guy, and a pretty simple run game. The 49ers have a run game that's very diverse, very complicated to the opponent. Mm-hmm. They, they'll run the inside zone, the outside zone, the power, the trap, the draw, the boom, the boom, different formations and personnel groups, and it's very difficult to stop, let alone all the play actions that come from it. Play action, he sets me, you know, in the pocket. Play action, he's moving out naked. I mean, those are tough, and that's what he's best at. This is a perfect offense for the guy. So, uh, talking about the 49er defense, and now the 49er offense, and the vibe I'm getting from you, the, the 49ers are gonna win, they're gonna cover. What's yeah, your, I don't know about sp- covering. I don't bet, I don't do any, <laughs> I don't even know what the spread is. I don't really care. But I, I, I just feel they have the better roster. Mm-hmm. They have the better team. Um, the matchup, I can't get it out of my mind when, they two, when the two played head-to-head. I mean, that's, that's very telling, you know. It, like, it, like I mentioned, the other championship game, Tennessee and Kansas City have, have already played this year, and Tennessee won 35-32, and that'll be a doozy game too. But, but this was a beatdown. And so I suppose the Niners are favored, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, good. And like so, touch, yeah. yeah, I don't care about all that, you know. But... Um, they should win. They're, they're the better team in my mind. I mean, if if Aaron Rodgers has one of his great Aaron Rodgers days, you darn right the Packers can win. Okay, so the, the 49ers but, are going to beat who in the Super Bowl then? You know what? I'm just hoping that it's my buddy Andy Reid. You know, Andy Reid and I coached mm-hmm. together at Green Bay. Um, we shared an office. I mean, the office was this big. It was like, hey, Andy, how you doing? What's for lunch? I mean, it's like, you know, um, so we go way back. We're good friends. I love the guy. And he's been so, he's got over 200 wins. Mm-hmm. He's, he's, he's like, and he's just getting started with Patrick Mahomes. He's going to have 300 wins and beat Curly Lambeau or whoever. And so, um, so I root for Andy. Um, I know players on the other team and coaches on the other team and every team. But, but there's something about Andy Reid that, you know, he hasn't won a Super Bowl. Um, he's been to one. This is a seventh championship game that he's coached. Seven. Only two guys have yeah. more, Tom Landry and Bill Belichick. One and five in those sides. Yeah, you know, he got beat. He got yeah. beat. Yeah. And, you know, the Patriots beat him last year. And so um, so this one is uh, important for him and his legacy. I think he's a Hall of Famer anyway. Mm-hmm. But a Super Bowl really helps that, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> exactly. So uh, the Chiefs, you're saying the Chiefs. I think it's Chiefs game. Niners in the Super Bowl. Are we predicting? Is that yeah. what we have We're to do here? We're going to make a b- prediction before prediction. you make a prediction on an NFL network. Uh, so you just decided to stay in the Bay Area, right? Uh, <clears throat> I love the Bay Area. Four kids, uh, Gail. Big empty house now. Uh, it's empty. Hey, anybody home? <laughs> Nobody's home. Uh, we're hearing echoes throughout the uh, Mariucci <laughs> compound there. But I, I want to play one clip of your son because I love his music. In fact, as this show is airing, Stephen Ray is uh, playing in Oceanside right now. Here's a quick clip. Okay. Come out. <clears throat> 
I love mm-hmm. his music. Country I do too. music. Stephen Ray. Yeah, yeah. Stephen Ray. But what did he, he get he, the he voice dropped, from? He dropped the Mariucci, you know, Italian country. I don't know what that is. So he just went Stephen Ray, right? I just know Gail must have a hell of he's, a voice. He, he, he's get, a, he writes song, his own songs, and he's just, uh, he's just a talent. And, and uh, I love listening to him. He's very passionate. Now, you see, I got the piano there. We got, you know, get a, you know, musically inclined kids. I don't know where they got it. I don't. I can't even turn on the radio. And so, do we have radios anymore? You I know. got Alexa. Play Silent Night. <laughs> no. I mean, it's like. <laughs> Wait, is you that, know, Alexa did you hear me? Did you is hear listening me? Listening to everything you say. Watch this. See, see if she can hear me. Alexa, do you know Dennis O'Donnell? Dead silence. <laughs> she went, who? <laughs> it's silent. That's embarrassing. I got to get out of here with that. Steve, th- hey, hey, thanks a lot. Good okay. to see you. Usual. Yep. Been a while. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to see you in Miami because the 49ers, I agree. Yeah, I'll see you in Miami. We'll hang out, okay? All right, man.